Well, welcome to another edition of the program Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All and Vision for All. Today, well, the program is with a guest, somebody who needs little or no introduction. But before then, the name remains Abdel Aziz Ahmed Hadar. Welcome you to another edition of the program. Precisely a few days back, of course, the news made the headline, the dethronement of the Emir of Kano, the 14th Emir of Kano, I would say, Emir Muhammad Senussi II. But before then, precisely on 15, 14th of June 2019, someone, our guest today, actually talked about this and it came to pass. Our guest today is uh, Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Mahmoud Gumi. Like I said, he needs little or no introduction. Sheikh, good to have you with us again. Okay, thank you very much. All it's right. a pleasure for me to be with you. Sometime in June, I mean, you were our guest in our studios and uh, we talked about the fight between uh, the governor of, Ken of Kano State, uh, Dr. Omar Ganduji, and uh, the then Emir. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked about the Emir not being wanted there, and he may be edged out. And we just saw that happen a few days ago. What will you make of the situation now? Okay, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the beneficent, um, uh, actually, if somebody will go through history, he will see that the emirate system itself uh, which the colonial british colonial masters met ruling a big uh, land of the northern states uh, didn't abolish it okay. because they find it easier to rule the area through the influence of the emirs indirect rule, indirect rule. Mm -hmm. so they left the system because it's easier for them. Uh, there's already a structure. They only need to commandeer the directives and uh, the system will do what they want. So even during the British colonial time, so many emirs were dethroned. Those who are uh, not obeying the British colonialism. But those who obey, the and what the British did also is to make sure that at that time they select emirs that sometimes are not even educated. Okay. Not even educated, neither in Islamic nor in the Western education. education. Mm -hmm. And in such way, they do exactly what they are requested to do by the government. So, in essence, the emirate system, as people inherited it today, is already subjugated by the modern new government that comes okay. mm. and the government that replaced the colonial system is also subjugating the same emirate system to the extent that now they are subjugated and um, relegated to the background to the extent that a chairman of a local government has more powers than an emir for scholars emir this is the real situation so I cannot see how somebody who wants to assist in building a just society and who Allah has endowed with, uh, endowed with uh, qualities and uh, education can subject himself to such a system. I know there's that nostalgia of maintaining the tradition of our home, of our house. But what they don't understand is that when the British came, they removed the real emirs that people were following and substituted with emirs that are subservient to the colonial region. Okay. So now if you talk about, okay, our house, your house is, uh, is a relic of what has been used by the British. Mm -hmm. Because for every emir, there are emirs that were removed. We, we can see in Sokoto Shufa, the Tahiru, how he was banished and in fact he fought the British and he was killed and they brought somebody who would be subservient to the British. So in that sense I, I think um, there is no justification. What I look at it in total is that it is time. Okay. It is time the whole nation, not only the North, the whole nation should abolish the Emirate system and the chieftaincy systems yes, completely okay. uh, because uh, if we can establish the rule of law where everybody is equal by by the law then that can control 
people better than the Emirates system. Emirates system. Yes. Well, well people, people will say Senussi actually saw this coming. Mm -hmm. Senussi knew he was not going to last long on that throne. Mm -hmm. or like you said, his own grandfather, uh, Mohamed Senussi the first, also suffered the same fate. Yes. Well, people will say, well, his own grandfather was the governor, uh, he was the chief justice, he was the accountant general, he was the police inspector, he was virtually everything. And people will say Senussi's uh, trying, attempt to be like his grandfather could be his undoing. But again, we see a situation where during peacetime, the government not care about these traditional rulers. But mm -hmm. once there is crisis, the same governors start running to these traditional leaders to say, we need you to talk to your people. Doesn't that make them relevant? No, no, it doesn't make them relevant. Because even if they talk, how many times, uh, just recently, even the Sultan of Sokoto's palace was vandalized by people. And the, even the Emir of Zaria, when he, he came for the inauguration of the uh, new governor, mm -hmm. uh, Boys were uh, throwing the throwing at them, and uh, look at in Maiduguri, whereby boys have taken into insurgency. Mm -hmm. The Borno Palace cannot uh, calm them down. So we have to realize that we have reached a point, point of diminishing return. Okay, it's just maintaining uh, a system which uh, does not actually effectively suppress or help to ameliorate the grievances of the society. Sorry. Moreover, and what makes it more difficult is that this system is it itself uh, uh, oppressive okay oppressive in the sense that just imagine now if you go into any first class emir's palace mm. you cannot sit down with him like this and talk with him you sit on the floor you sit on the floor you be conscious of what you're asking Secondly, so when people bow down to women, this one is spiritually, and when you talk about Islam, mm. such a person definitely Allah will bring a way that he will be humiliated. Because the Prophet said, Nobody, matawada in son, Allah, if you are humble, if you humble yourself towards God, God will raise you. But if you are haughty and big headed, God will bring you down. So the system actually, because of that oppressive tendency of the system of oppressing the Talakawa, if we could remember, Aminu Kano and his PIP is all about this. And he redeeming the Talakawa from the grip of the Emira system. And Aminu Kano is one of the northern political movement that actually tried to enlighten the Talakawa that look, don't subjugate yourself to these people. That's why the father, his father too was part of that. Ah, yes. Then another thing is uh, an, another of the oppressive tendency is having concubines. Okay. Concubines means slaves. Up to now, as I'm talking, there are areas that if you check their palaces, you see concubines. And you, Nigerians are subjugated to slavery. So how can we say that this system should maintain for an imagined uh, role of emirs? They don't have any imagine. In fact, the only major role is that you come and bow down to them, and in time of crisis, they cannot stop anything. We have seen the Fulani uh, nomads mm. making hemen. The emirs have to, in some areas, cooperate with them. That's why the government is uh, alleging that emirs are cooperating. They are cooperating with them to stay in peace. So they cannot control them. They cannot control. What can they control? They can control nobody. nobody. Now, like now, Asu is on, on strike. Mm. There's no area that can speak to speak Asu. To Asu. Well, so, we, so you see, uh, but time has come. The time is yes, up. yes. Everything has a time when it's becoming useless. So instead of, because it's a very, it's a good legacy and it's a good. Uh, they have a good background because uh, religion will, will cherish it. So to save the charisma and dignity of religion, it's better to say, okay, this system is abolished. Okay. Just like uh, when the Islamic Caliphate was abolished, Islam was saved from humiliation. Otherwise, now if there is still a Caliph, he will be dancing to the tune of Russians and and uh, Americans, because Islam we didn't form that force to be able to. Uh, we form it before, but now we can't. 
So it's better that, okay, all these kings we have in the Middle East, or all these presidents we have in the Middle East, they are not speaking in the name of Islam. Islam. Otherwise, it would be a, mm. a, a disgrace to Islam. So they are more government on their own. No, they are more, so they are talking about their own stuff. And I think it's high time now the Emirates system completely to be to be abolished. And, okay. pe and people and people then should take people they elect as as Umar and as the people who allegiances to okay. and which is true up to now mm -hmm. because they are supposed to protect the culture, protect the deen, protect the I mean the religion, protect people's uh, wealth. Yeah. Uh, it's the governor. So people should elect governors. And when I say it should be abolished it's high time to note that this if I call it, if it's right to say, this royal blood, you see, because they, their psychological makeup makes them feel uh, important, they exhale in anything you put them. And uh, example of Sadona, who is there, and even San Sanusi now, he, he did well in as a, a as a civil governor, better than being a yes, better than riding Rolls Royce in, in the midst of uh, poverty in Kano. He did woefully as a as an emir. But if you put him somewhere, he can do well. Oh, well, but people who say there are exceptions. We see Amy of Gombe, for instance, mm -hmm. who is building madrasas, educating children, using the Emirate wealth to do that. Yes, that is, that is very good. But as well, a local government chairman can do that as well. So why does he have to be an Emir? The local government, what is the local government fund for? Is to do that thing. We should not assume and we'll start working uh, the, the role of government. That's why many, many organizations come to me. Their aim and objective is to alleviate poverty, okay. to do that. To do, I say, then you are replicating a government. It's so simple. Don't start organizing yourself as organizations doing government's work. Yeah, but Elect. Because of the failure of uh -huh. So now, instead of wasting more time in trying to replicate government's job, Try to elect people who know what they are doing. Simple, and you'll be safe. Mm -hmm. I've seen that in uh, Zamfara okay. during the Sharia debacle. Yeah, during Yerima Bakura's, Bakura's government. When, when the, especially the first time. Yeah. And the second time he had problem, and I saw it when he wanted to, to 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 springboard to become the president of Nigeria. Then he has to. Uh, start. Uh, he told down the. Told, yes, 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 yes. But <laughs> the first time. But it's own first time. But it's a typical example whereby government is taking care of its people, and is protecting their religion, protecting their wealth, protecting their anything, everything that is required of an Islamic uh, government. They do that to the extent that prisons. If you go to the prison, there's nobody. Even police say the least crime right. state is the fara. So, Yerima, as a governor, not as a Yerima, mm -hmm. was able to do oh. a lot. But the point is that even Christians were celebrating yes, yes. that the Sharia was the sh benefiting, was them, benefiting, more benefiting than them. them, yes. Yeah. And you see, Yerima could have been the Emir of Yerima, of uh, Bakura. Bakura. He, he wouldn't be able he to achieve, achieve that. that. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, Dr. that bring us to this issue of a street begging and al system. Uh, we know, of course, a lot of issues around that. Is it Islamic? Is it not Islamic? And, but now we're seeing governors banning the issue of street begging and especially al -Majuri. Can we actually ban this al -Majuri? Is it a right step for governors to ban al -Majuri? Okay, in fact, this brings us to the Emirate system Emirate itself. System. Okay. al -Majuri system is, an, is, an, is a cultural or is an old Islamic scholarship system, okay. which, which was very effective during its own time. You know, usually the house of learning, they are either nomads or farmers. farmers yeah. And a nomad, a father, and uh, or a farmer, cannot really sit down with his children and teach them. So they gather them to a malam, like yeah. taking them to a boarding school. Yeah. Who teaches them? Yes, and the whole society supports them. Whenever they see them and magically, they give them food, they give them arms, they, so it worked to maintain the society and improve uh, literacy and education at that time. But now time has changed. Its usefulness has turned into a, a bad effect because there are ideologies that are imported from outside people. They can, in, they can capitalize on them and, and use them as uh, foot soldiers to be criminals, to be extremists, extremists to be anything. So the time of al has itself come 
to a point of diminishing return so it should be abolished too okay. but how do we abolish it it should be gradual okay. what we do is we, we we build infrastructures we make funds available every child every child in nigeria should have a seat in the school okay. we don't need to call it almajiri school um, uh, expand the, the amount of money you spend on human development I know when Bill Gates came one time to Nigeria, he had a <coughs> what do you call PowerPoint presentation. Who was the president? The president in front. He is the only person who told the president directly, "Your budget does not reflect uh, development. development. It's too low. Mm -hmm. You spend more on human, not on construction of roads and bridges. When you develop the humans, they will construct better roads and better bridges than what you." What, what the government is spending billions of dollars on, so spend on money, uh, money on education, on health, and uh, other things that can bring up out the capability and potentiality of human being. So that is the way we can face out al majority But to make a law and ban it like that, uh, I don't, I don't think you will turn these al into criminals. If you stop them from holding that small dish going around. Then they will hold drugs and they will hold guns and they will be kidnappers and they can be anything because there's some somehow they have to survive. But, but, but again, when governments stand up and say we are banning this, mm. because we've seen situations where government take decisions without providing alternatives. Like. Today, there are even within the city centers, there are places you go to, children have to trek two, three kilometers to even get to school. When in every situation, you should even be having at least schools close to them, not to talk of rural areas. Now I've gone to somewhere behind just Kaduna Airport here, where they call Sabon Berni. Oh. No school, no hospital, nothing. And the father will say, "Well, I want my child to acquire both Western and, and Islamic education. education. So I've take, I have to take him to Kaduna City Centre every now, day. Shouldn't oh. people, government, actually look at providing these facilities at rural? Areas? Yes, this is what we are saying. You should your effort, our money, and what you call energy should be diverted towards developing these people, building them schools, and also uh, getting teachers qualified, spending a lot of money rather than beautifying our cities with good uh, first class roads when even people don't have enough money to, to fuel their cars. So I think that should be like, say, a misplacement of priority actually. But once we can spend money and develop these infrastructures and help teachers conscript teachers and produce more teachers, encourage people to be teachers more than even to be soldiers or police, then you will see a real change. Yeah, Within quality. a very short time, quality education. quality qualitative education, then you will see a change. Within a very short time in this country. Mm. Well, well, Doctor, the last time we spoke, we talked mm. about the issue of insecurity mm. and, uh, since June, but uh, up till now, the situation seems to be changing. It's getting I mean, worse. I, I, I mean, sometimes when you feel it's getting better, then mm. it takes another dimension. Yes. When you feel it's getting better, it takes another dimension that it's getting worse. And the North is worst hit in the mm. situation we are talking about. Yes. The President, the Senate President, Deputy Speaker, the Minister of Defense, most of the service chiefs, intelligence chief, inspection general police, custom, immigration. I mean, the head of all these organizations are northerners. Yes. Yet the north is what is worst hit. Yes. Is it that northerners don't try to get power and don't think about their home? One of the reasons is that the economic structure is already geared to to help a region. Okay. So once you put leaders there mm -hmm. and they are going to walk by the book, okay, they can effect no change. They can affect no change because the script is already written. They have to follow it. So actually, um, this is one of the reasons why I think I positively think the way the, this government APC came with the slogan of fighting corruption actually um, aggravated its uh, power and position. Okay. Because the president should have power to to do things to correct a malady, not the conventional, but the unconventional way. Okay. Let me give you an example. When Umaru Eradua came, he found that the middle, or the, the Delta region, Nacha Delta. Delta, they have militants, the region is neglected, and they, they, are vandalizing, uh, they, are, they are vandalizing, has produced 
the, the end on the development has developed uh, into militancy. So what he did, he created a special ministry to look into the affairs and put someone, one of them. You see, this is an unconventional because in a nation like Nigeria, you should not uh, single out a region. Okay, region. Uh, but because there's a peculiar problem. Right, yes. So this problem, uh, what the president could have done even the moment he came in, unconventionally, then he must have, he should have thought of creating a special ministry that will look into poverty alleviation in the northern region. Okay. If he does that, that will be. That will have solved most of the problem. That will solve, but will, will they allow them? Because the way he came, they, they didn't come. They, they they came with this uh, slogan that we 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 fight corruption. Corrupt, fight corruption. But corruption, yes, I know corruption is bad. One hundred percent, it's not good. But co corruption developed because government, by its structure, has to have ways of getting money, not the conventional way, yes. the okay. unconventional way to deal with issues. That's why in, in military, the military budget is not audited. Why? Because military, you cannot find a, a war conventionally, mm -hmm. that everything has to go through the accountant general. And no, it's not possible sure. because of uh, <coughs> the emergency need of uh, warfare. So it's poverty. The, go the government that can succeed is the government that can look at poverty as a very important security issue. Okay. That they need to spend a lot of money in trying but, 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 but to. But um, we've seen the North East Development Commission mm -hmm. that was put together. Yes. Uh, even though, uh, I mean, we speak to some of your former colleagues, you mm -hmm. were in the military. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you, especially the recent attack that we saw. Uh, in um, was the name Aldo yes. or Eastern, mm. uh, a retired military intelligence military officer was saying, Look, Boko Haram have their identity. That Aldo attack has no identity of Boko Haram, that there is political Boko Haram, there is the real insurgency or whatever. But now we are seeing the Northeast, sometimes we have a law, all of a sudden, then you, have to, you have this right. Yes, and the military guys will say, Look, we are not fighting conventional war, so it's not easy. To overcome, but for ten years on, shouldn't we have overcome this crisis in the northeast? Yes, I think that there is a statement which the president made, when, which is right. He said that this kind of attack cannot happen without some local mm. uh, support. Okay. Uh, because no, I, I think it's, it has the fingerprint of Boko Haram. Because why Boko Haram is attacking civilians? Uh, let me tell you. Is sometimes mm -hmm. this anti-terror war. Sometimes people. That are fighting this war against terror they no. don't want to listen to this truth okay and okay. if you don't know if you don't listen mm. you can never cure terrorism you bomb when you bomb you kill our children when you kill you kill our children and women okay. you don't discriminate so since that is the case we'll start killing and bombing your civilians too Without any, without thinking of who you yes, are. because this is what they do also. So it means the war on terror should be very carefully conducted. It should be a precision surgery. Try to avoid their civilian casualty too. Okay. Try to lower and encourage them to leave this uh, insurgency. And it's very difficult, but it's the only way. Ah, but, but doctor, we saw the safe corridor that the military came with. Yes, and said, well. For those who are, we saw when the last one happened, even mm. though people oppose it, mm. the uh, say I mean some of those repentant, the, the military started with what they call the self corridor. Mm. If you don't want to fight again, come out, come, we we'll rehabilitate you and yeah, put you into the. Uh, yes, that's we, we saw a lot of people. Yes, actually came. that's this one of it. Okay. Supposing this has started since during the, um, Jonathan's time, it will have uh, produced a lot of uh, results. Okay. Yes, not rather than just giving them airplanes like now. The, this present government bought from America airplanes of more than four hundred million dollars to fight terror. And these planes can only increase terrorism, they cannot cure it. Because once you start bombing people in their camps, killing their children and women, these people will still come and kill your civilians too. This amount of money, $400 million, which the president even took without the, the, okay, without the approval of the Senate, which also cost, wanted to cause a problem for him, that amount of money, if it sank in that region, I'm telling you, 
it will abate all the terrorism you see because you see constructions there schools there markets there you know that activity would definitely mellow down the insurgency because a lot of it is because of poverty poverty mm. but, but, but don't we see what the current governor of Borno is doing yes the man who is going to trenches sometimes even where the military will say don't go mm. he will head that yes. and we've seen results that is mm. achieving yeah. now somebody will ask what happens to our intelligence especially military intelligence no, yes but he's he, in fact one of the things he said which is very good mm. the whole nigerian army officers are men rank and file mm. they are not up to 200,000 in the whole Nigeria, whereas Borno itself needs about 300,000 soldiers. If there's a surge of soldiers there, they could have occupied every inch of Sambisa. And they'll be, they'll, but we don't have, we don't spend. And there are many youth that are unemployed. Many, many. If you conscript them into an army or a voluntary army, pay them money, they will take over all the place, the, the Binugari jungle or whatever it is. If you conscript people, they will, they will go in there. And money. The point is, we are not spending. We are not thinking the right way strategically and doing the right thing. That is what causes the continuance. Some people say, in, some people in the echelon of the security are milking the system. The system. Which, yes, yes. If it, if it continues, probably. Well, uh, Doctor, what you say when uh, recently? I mean, interview with your right, but the massive Abinjida. Mm. He said when I created the special force. People came yeah, and the, the National Guard. National Guard. Yes. They came disbanded. And he said, if you are allowed that National Guard to be, we were meant to understand Sambisa Forest was actually a training ground for uh, those special forces. Yes. And he said, if National Guard had allowed to be, maybe we wouldn't be where we are today. I, I co completely concur with him. Hmm. It's completely true. So that when we po uh, politicize issues that are beneficial to the nation, then this is the end result we have. Well, it's a hotline mark of the program, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. And our guest today is uh, Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Mahmoud Gumi. And we're looking at other national issues. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll look at other national issues. We'll touch also Elsa Big. He is a medical doctor, if you're not aware. We will be right back. The program is reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. Well, we are not just number two nationwide. Uh, for nothing, you know what we've been doing. Well, like Aliko Dangote will tell you, if you are not, if you can't, if you are not number one, accept number two and walk your way up to number one. So we might be on our way back. Our guest today is uh, Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Mahmoud Bumi. Like I said, he did little or no introduction. He is an alumnus of the famous Amadebele University and of course he joined the military, rising to the rank of a major and left. To, well, be, to, be, precise, to be precise, a captain. A, a captain, <laughs> a captain, all right. Uh, rising yeah. to the point of a captain, mm. then uh, leaving the khaki and uh, I mean joining. But of course today he sits on the throne, when I say throne, not that emirate throne, <laughs> as Sultan Bello Marks, where he does so many things. Doctor, thank you for being here with us. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. All right. Oh. Well, the national security and issue that, but let's leave that aside. Okay. Uh, it's Dr. Uzma Bugaji who will even say the 80% or more of the population of Nigeria is in the north. Yes. 80% or more of the landmass is in the north. Yes. They will say virtually everything we need, natural and human resources. God has given it to the north. Yes. But any time national discourse comes up, it's all about poverty. And somebody will ask, how rich is the poor north or how poor is the rich north? 
Okay, the north is uh, endowed with a lot of bounties, a lot of resources, so everything we have in the north except except good leaders. Okay. We, uh, except good leaders, you can count the leaders that we have in the north that are conscientious about the north by your finger. Uh, what do you call it? Even though they claim that northerners have been ruling Nigeria for a long time, it's just leadership. Everything's about leadership. Once you have a good leader, a good captain, then uh, things will move. And I think. I still think it's not too bad, really. Okay. Uh, it's, and it's not too late. Um, with good leadership, uh, the North can come out of this uh, quagmire of poverty, ignorance, and whatever it is. This uh, insurgency we have all over the North, crimes. We can, with good leadership, we can be able to overcome this problem. So our problem is leadership. Oh, First up, some, uh, someone will say, when we talk about the North, mm. this was a North with rich culture. Yes. This was a North that even colonialism met with a system of education. Education and yes. This is a North that people met, they can read and write. Mm. It might not be in the Western way. Mm. But today, at the point that the Northerners were dressing, other parts of the country were still walking around naked. Yes. But today somebody will say the North is backward. <laughs> Has the North really actually backward? Yes, we can say it's backward because uh, education is a continuous process. It's dynamic education. Knowledge is being increased. Now we are talking about uh, internet. We are talking about mm. and the northern culture and education did not allow people to accompany this kind of uh, developments to the extent that we are left behind. This is what they mean. If you go to Kano, uh, if you ask how many surgeons are there, they are not, their number is not commercial with the population. In the, I, I met a doctor in Niger State and he was my classmate in, uh, not, not my classmate, my schoolmate in ABU, who was a okay. doctor. He told me for more than 20 years he is the only gynecologist in the whole of Niger State. Yeah. So this is the underdevelopment. Under where, where are our leaders? Why are, not they why are they not sending boys to go and study? And, uh, and we have the highest maternal mortality and which means that uh, they said almost 500,000 women die in, in, in Nigeria, the whole of Nigeria every year because of childbirth and most of them, about 80% of this 500,000 are in the north. Why? For these reasons. We don't have qualified personnel. Most of the people, we don't have hospitals, we don't have drugs. So where you have hospital they don't have the qualified gynecologist mm. where you have even a hospital a qualified gynecologist you don't have the instruments this compounded the problem so when we say the north is backward yes it's backward in terms of modern way of of life and survival and we have to take that uh, as very a very serious issue uh, during Sadona's time when he built uh, Ahmed Bello University and he wanted to build the medical school, the English said, look, don't worry, we are ready to train for you 1,000 doctors every year. Yeah. Okay. Instead of training maybe 100 years, he said, no, I better train my 100 than to be waiting for your scholarship. And look at ABU now, it, then it has branches, three branches, one in Mulem Fashi, one in Zaria, one in Kaduna here, and was producing one of the best doctors. ABU doctors are all over the world, big consultants, you see. They were trying to help the society. So this is what we want from leaders that will embrace the whole society and look at what the society needs and spend a lot of money, pump a lot of money in trying to get this manpower and this qualified personnel. Okay. Well, Dr. That brings us, let's come home. Uh, Just so uh, recently, a lot of people uh, have been crying. We saw the demolition of markets all around Ketuna uh, uh, without alternatives. Uh, In fact, precisely uh, a few hours back, we saw a situation where a governor went to somewhere and uh, he, was, he, was, he was, I mean, pebbles were thrown at him. This was the same place where people contributed money, buy him nomi bought him nomination form, bought him cars, bought him uh, clothes. What do we make of the situation where governors who are meant to protect lives and property take away people's of sources of livelihood without providing them alternatives? Okay, number one, uh, Mala Rufai governor is, is my classmate in the School of Basic Studies. And he says so. Yes, I, I know him very well. But one thing about, uh, he doesn't consult me or ask me about anything concerning how he governs 
his, his uh, government uh, to get uh, the necessary advice because as, as a governor or a ruler you're like a blind man okay you see like a blind man he, he you depend on people who will drag you here or there and unfortunately when you don't have people that can look at your face and tell you the truth. the bitter truth because truth is bitter yeah. then you have problem secondly when you think you are smarter than everybody that you there's nowhere you can get uh, enlightenment then you have problem as a leader because like the Quran say kulli the ilmin alim. every knowledge person has somebody who's more knowledgeable than him because knowledge is has a lot of is, is, it has no boundary okay, see. yes you can be a very good farmer but you can be a fisher fish, a very good fisherman so knowledge is so wide that nobody can say he is uh, better so th I think this is one of the problems the the governor is facing actually he doesn't consult people he's supposed to consult in it otherwise whatever you do you can do it with a human face whereby you can elevate people's uh, uh, agitation and you and their fright you can do everything uh, in a way that people can really appreciate what you are trying to do but in the wrong I think his intention is good yes to beautify to correct Nigeria and this is another thing also which um, which if he has been asking me I will tell him I know Shinkafi when he became the governor of Zanfar State. State I was in Mecca he came to me okay. and seeking for an advice and I told him look don't worry yourself with fanciful things. Just concentrate on education. Okay. Concentrate on health. Concentrate on giving basic things to people like water and electricity. When I finished saying that, he said, you're just saying exactly what is in my mind. That I will mean basic. Provide the basic things to people. Then later in life, like that, if you continue, then you can you can build them roads, you can correct their markets, you can do that, you can do that. But when people are in abject poverty, people are in want, people are destitute, people are dying in hospitals, all this development, if they are superficial and artificial, they mean nothing to the common man. So we should spend billions of dollars, billions, in trying to see we, no child has no seat in a school improve schools, improve teachers' salary, all do that. So these roads you found, which are do around, even during the colonial time, yes, they are good. it's good to expand them. It's good. I'm not saying it's not good. It's good, but there is prioritization of things. First and first, you look at, uh, it's just like a patient coming to a doctor, a road traffic accident patient coming to a doctor in a hospital with broken legs, bleeding wounds. There's prioritization in treatment. Which one, which one should you treat first? The first thing he comes, every doctor will say, the first thing, as they bring him into the hospital, the first thing is, please try to put a line. What they mean? Try to put water. Okay. Get a vein. Get a vein and put a drip. You know why? To maintain the heart. Okay. Because when heart loses blood, it can go into shock and failure. So you must keep the patients alive first. Yes, first. And we say water because now you cannot just take blood and give somebody, except when you do cross matching and this. You don't even give him blood. You f the first thing you give him would put normal saline, put to keep the, the volume of the blood and enough to survive. Then you take blood for cross matching to give him blood. blood. You are not talking about the fracture. Mm -hmm. In fact, the fracture, you may not talk about it until maybe after two weeks. But you see a layman, he can say, look at this doctor, somebody with, pro I can see his bone, bone protruding, and he's not even looking at it. So you have to put priority in what you do. Now people are hungry and angry. People are divided. People are infested by criminals from every angle. Nobody is safe. These are areas where the government should put energy, money, and intelligence after stabilizing the nation. When there's peace, then we say, okay, let's bring money and make roads, 
correct our beautify, beautify our, our markets yes that is it but not at this time so it's a misplacement of priorities but, but, but wouldn't he wouldn't he have done it better as against just displacing these people completely without an, an, an alternative yes what they could have done to you know, part of the way that he can do it is say okay uh, let me have the list of people, especially those with the uh, AC of all. Okay. Or those who have been there for long. Yeah. Let me have their list. Let's see the structures we are going to build. Okay, you, even before the structure, we can give you uh, a C of all of application. Uh, this for you, this for you, this for that. If you do that to people, they will, they will assist you even, even, even mixing the cement and. Mm and build them Speed the place. Up the job. Ah, yes, they will are situated as laborers, free. Because they know they are building what they will inherit. We're seeing that not just in Kosombochi because mm. we've seen that mm. now as we're speaking, but now it's been threatened. Mm. We saw that in Kau and mm. work has not started uh, up, up till now. Mm. But, but but across the north we've seen when governors like 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 this talk. Again, we're talking about four years. One year is already gone. Oh. <laughs> and we have, we have uh, like people tell you in politics is actually two years. Two years of two serious years work. Yes. Mm. With, in, in politics, mm. do we see this actually going to an end? Well, uh, it depends on the authority. If they think uh, they can change their approach mm. and rethink their way, I think they can make it. Actually, okay. it's not too bad. Even in the Kaswabachi case, they can bring these people, but let them all come together and say, look, okay, this is your. This is your portion of the yeah, allotting to, to you. They will keep quiet. Okay. Yes, they will keep quiet. But see, nobody wants to depart with something which has he has cherished, maybe inherited from his father. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly the city is demolished and taken over by the government. Okay. Actually, just recently we saw the celebration of uh, International Women's Day, and some of us we say for us every day is a Women's Day. Yes. The woman is so important in Islam that the whole chapter. So so is dictated to women. Yes. And uh, we always say, I said, there are rights that are given to women in Islam that no law on earth give us such rights. Mm. But here we are seeing women talking about their rights from the Western angle of doing things. Mm. What could the problem be if women would actually look at their, their rights from Islamic perspective? Wouldn't they be freer and be more developed today than they are? Yes. Um, if you look at the woman in the West, mm. the so-called liberated woman, the woman, you find that they, they, they are in a big mess mm. and their life is in a terrible shape. Um, and I think and I believe they envy our Muslim women. Okay. In fact, scientific evidence has shown us the, recently uh, that the, the, the Muslim woman is the most neatest woman. After some investigation, they found that the woman uh, spinal imprint in her is is usually monogamous. It's always one okay. compared to the non-Muslims. So our life actually uh, is configured by the God of creation. Yeah. Allah said, "Woman, arada and dikri fa inna lahu ma'isha tandanka wa nashuru yamul kiamati aman." Whoever will uh, desist from following the revelation, he will live a very difficult, distressful life. So this is what we can see. Their life is full of distress. So when our Muslim woman sees them um, and think they are liberated, they are actually not liberated. They are imprisoned by their uh, conscience. Okay. Hardly to see. Hardly you can see in the West a man who. 100% trust his, his wife that she's not doing anything extra marital and hardly a woman can trust her husband well it's not the going here but the more westernized the more we copy them the more all these ills societal is coming into us now wherever you see a woman killing her own husband we never heard of that because of polygamy it's not ever had and you find suicide even coming into it poisoning uh, relatives all this kind of social ills are now becoming more and more the more we copy the West. So what I advise the Muslim women is to come back to their roots, come back to what Allah has prescribed for them in the holy book. Allah has given them in Fa'aya Libri Jali Nusibun Mima Tarakal Walidan or Akram Walin Nisa Nusibun Mima Tarakal Walidan or Akram. Men and women they all have portion and share of inheritance. Never in human history whereby women are given inheritance. Usually it goes to the men. But here now God is saying, look, 
women they have rights to possession they can do whatever they like with their money they can do trading they can do anything so long there's no any interaction and mingling with men so i think uh, calling it women day is uh, actually entrenching that women are inferior okay yes because you don't have men this men International. Oh, Father's Day. Ah, father, not men. <laughs> okay. okay, you have Father's Day? There is Father's Day. Oh, this is Mother's Day, not Women's Day. <laughs> the, the woman. Is it women or Mother's? Oh, women's Day. It's women, mother's okay. Day. So, Father's Day and Mother's Day is alright. But when you have Women's Day, then means women are inferior and they are not inferior. Everybody has his own obligation, which is different. Just like a motor car. The steering is very important. Without it, you cannot steer anything. The tire is very, very important. Without the tire, you cannot move the pedal. These women in a human society, they are part and parcel of that human society and they are dignified. They have their full rights. If a man kills a woman, he's killed. If a, you know, there is nothing that differentiates a man. Can a woman actually know this right if she doesn't have the knowledge? No, in fact, knowledge is open to men and women. In fact, um, some of the survivors said half of Islamic knowledge we get it from from Aisha, a, 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 a prophet's wife, alayhi salatu wa salam. You know, they are, they are knowledgeable in everything. The only thing is, um, Islam considers the nature of the woman. There is something we call emotional intelligence. Yeah. Women are more sentimental and emotional in issues than men. Men are pra pragmatic. Uh, recently, there is a clip going around just to show the difference between how men think and women women, women think yeah. it's about small children small pupils in primary school they have a female teacher who made a concussion of fruits with bitter fruits in it so they brought the small boys and asked them to test so each boy after testing this concussion of fruits they will change their face and say oh it's bitter it's not good Everybody you give, oh no, it's bitter, it's not good. So they bring the girls. When they give the girls, one of the, well, the first one took it. So her face changed, but immediately she smiled. And she told the teacher, uh, it can be a little bit better than this. You know, she doesn't want to criticize about me and, and criticize because she she's looking at how the teacher will feel yes. after doing all these things and coming to say it's not bad so women are considered uh, they have empathy men don't have because of this basic difference when it comes to relegation of responsibility god gives men a different responsibility than women that differentiation does not mean inferiority, inferiority. no yes on that note, we end the program today with our guest, mm. Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Bamoudi. Doctor, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to have you in this program. Sure. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you for investing your time with, with us. That's the size of the program. When next we shall be here, my colleague Shafiq Suleiman will take it up from here. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Have a wonderful day, Ahmed.